John in London, hello. It's February the 9th, all day long, February the 9th, 2013. My video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. My addictive substance, alcohol, and then all, all the related addictive behaviour around work and relationships. Always trying to be perfect for the perfect girl. And there were a lot of perfect girls, and they were very beautiful and all shapes and sizes, you name it, I was in love with them. At least I thought I was. I think I was just infatuated, trying to get things perfect. And never so, a very trying soul here. So addicted to alcohol, people, places, things, things which I thought would fix me. And if I got there to wherever perfection might be, and I still didn't know where it was, because it didn't exist. So always, always unforgiving of myself and my abilities to make life the best it could be. And actually life was the best it could be in every moment. So I was constantly, constantly worrying that I wasn't up to the mark. I felt less than and all of those things. So alcohol provided me with the best friend I could possibly have and then it turned into my worst enemy. And it took a long time to listen to other people telling me what was wrong with me and then admitting and accepting my situation as it is. A person in recovery, an alcoholic in recovery, one day at a time. So what's helped me get there? Well, I share here about the Fellowship of AA, Alcoholics Anonymous. Never speak for it because it has no leaders. We are all, in the, in the words of the Fellowship, trusted servants in unity service and recovery we're all equal and right-sizing ourselves as best we can one day at a time so the fellowship of AA is what you see is what you get on any given day so those of you who know AA know exactly how it can be good bad or ugly it just depends on how the day's going and how people are so AA is not a fix I am not a fix and I don't try fixing life anymore I'm in, into experiencing life but the fellowship has helped me so much and every single person in it whether I agree with them or don't agree with them around beliefs and opinions it's not about being controversial in AA it's about getting on together and seeing how we get to the truth of now living in the reality and being open honest and willing to engage in life with a sober head so Alcohol Alcoholics Anonymous I'll share the AA preamble, which you will hear at every meeting if you're new, and if you're in the fellowship, it's just a, a gentle reminder. And it's a reminder to me, and it slows me down into the moment of now, what I'm trying to do, which is share about how it works, just for me, and then it's the many voices in fellowship which will make the difference as they do. Without the fellowship, I doubt that I would have been able to sustain living sober and that's why I do these videos so the AA preamble Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism the only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking there are no dues or fees for AA membership we are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution. Does not wish to engage in any controversy. Neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. So if we achieve sobriety on a daily basis, the rest of life can happen. So we have to put, for me, I need to put sober first. So the rest of life can happen. So it's not that I'm di saying I undermine my relationships and it's got to be fellowship first. It's sober first, so the rest of life can happen. So we develop our own personal choices based on what is right for us in recovery and it's not being told what to do it's actually the whole program is suggested 
So if you encounter people who are trying to tell you what to do in fellowship, thank them for their advice and suggestions and carry on with your own personal beliefs and path forward sober. You don't have to adopt anything which is not for you. It's so easy because people who come into recovery have control issues. It's absolutely true. The only thing we could control in the past was getting to the next drink. And that wasn't controlling, it was controlling us. So it's no wonder we all have control issues. But that's just part of life. Anyway, my my thoughts and feelings this morning. I just want to say one other thing. I was talking to my best friend last night and uh, she has a birthday coming up and it could be a midlife crisis but for one fact and it's the same for me and I, um, I hope I'm well and truly past my midlife crisis I'm sure I am is that uh, when we look outwards we actually still look out with a youthful outlook a happy outlook an outlook which is about interesting stuff about being good and naughty and all of those things about being being a human being living life so although our exterior appearance may look a bit aged we don't change inside that much when it comes to our approach to life if we have a particular way of looking at it and uh, my eyes my eyes and my mind are still youthful even though the rest of me might be dropping to pieces she isn't by the way she's very good looking anyway that wasn't part of my writing this morning it was just something that happened we get to be ourselves so my writing this morning all about step two which is being restored to sanity came to believe that a power greater than us could restore us to sanity in my case the power greater than me resides in the truth love and wisdom shared by other people and truth, love and wisdom is always in the moment of now and it keeps on changing or we get stuck in one attitude and belief and opinion and we maybe get stuck in a way which is not helpful so today emotional and spiritual insanity the old days emotional and spiritual sanity contingent on reality living reality just for today so this thing of emotional and spiritual, that's what the whole fellowship is about. Understanding feelings in the moment of now and any additional beliefs and opinions you hold for yourself. Fellowship, common ground around the primary purpose of sobriety, individual liberty. Freedom to choose our path with all our personal opinions, beliefs and alliances. I can be restored to sanity today if I can find the truth of now, how to love and how to be loved back and keep on learning the wisdom as truth and love change develop, grow and even wither in the moment of now everything is spiritual when we are everything is spiritual even when we are blind to it we can be blind to the truth, be blind to love and be blind to the wisdom around us today because we've, we've closed down and I did I completely closed down and trying to get out of that horrible mire the blackness and desolation that, that I faced I needed to be in the company of other people and I didn't talk much at the beginning and now I can't shut up as you notice so my words again today back in the insanity of self-harm of doing the same thing every day drinking myself to oblivion I could hear people talking and ignore their words I did not want to listen to their outlook and opinion about me already my outlook and opinion about me had been seriously undermined by me to be in denial of a fatal malady not wishing to believe something is true we have to be aware of the malady itself back in the day for me drink was never a problem it was the solution because the world was mad and I was judging it an insane world and I felt I was the only one sane the only sane person in it if I, had, if I had known I had been clinically depressed self-medicating with alcohol a workaholic and a relationshipaholic work I would drive myself 
to extremes and be judging people for going home on time rather than me staying late and finishing off and the same around relationships with women trying to be perfect trying to make the perfect situation and just being a very trying person who was not lovable because I didn't even understand me let alone I tried to make it perfect and I knew I loved them I did <laughs> just a pain in the neck or wherever but these things I know now and how can you be with someone who doesn't even know themselves very well so I had to open up really yeah would I have been able to see all these things back then? of course not I didn't have the self-awareness to be in denial about my self-esteem I truly denied it I say that again I didn't have the self-awareness to be in denial about my self-harm that was my drinking for a great deal of my life and then when I became aware of my self-harm I truly denied it because the world was at fault and it was horrible so I was always looking out for why I had to drink and why I needed to and why it was important that I always had it handy so everything back then was a bad and ugly spiritual experience and the spiritual experience is the truth, love and wisdom of now so I was, I was lacking in good information because I didn't want it I didn't believe anybody else and when I became self-aware aware, well, everything back then was a bad and ugly spiritual experience and the experience of now is good spiritual experience even when it's good, bad or ugly I'm still sober contingent on the day I ask for help from the universe or my next door neighbour whoever and wherever it may be I can right size myself and my senses and become sensible again and I can cope with reality today most of the time and if I can't even I have to, have to dial 999 because I'm having a bit of a fit well not a fit but uh, I am sensitive to hypos because I'm type 1 diabetic and I live alone and that can be quite fearful especially when the sweats and the heart rate goes and then you, you, you're going unconscious and you, you search for the honey as best as you can to get sugar levels up and then you have a consternation because they go too high it's all about balance but sometimes things do go out of balance and it's just the way it is developing emotional and spiritual living understanding and experiencing my feelings in the moment of now and being able to cope with them that's emotional and spiritual living feelings in the moment of now coping enjoying not enjoying all of those if I cannot cope with what is going on emotionally I will feel overwhelmed in some way or simply not able to understand what's going on and I can ask for help if it's available or maybe I have to just sit, sit a while ponder who to ask so living in the moment where everything happens where we have access to truth love and wisdom and in all its shapes and forms there is less to fear and more courage to be had as our confidence grows in not needing to know the answers to everything the spiritual angle which is part of the AA daily reflection for today contingent on our spiritual condition which is experiencing the truth love and wisdom of today and <clears throat> the reason why I say truth love and wisdom Gandhi said God is truth God is love and wisdom is where we get to so Gandhi very practical actually God is truth God is love wisdom comes from everyone and not a single source which is a higher power than me it's very practical spiritual for me living and coping and experiencing life today so spiritual is less theory and more to do with practice practice living in the moment is quite difficult when we have forgotten how to relate to what is going on around us 
knowing our feelings and why we have them and why we experience them differently so everything can be felt differently it's all to do with our history and our attitudes and our thinking many people can think spiritual concepts and make elaborate beliefs and opinions it does not mean they know how their emotional and spiritual life is happening whilst they are still thinking about it so the more we think try and think spiritual on a thinking level we think we've got the angle sorted actually feelings in the moment of now is spiritual so we're thinking about it and we're missing it when I feel the truth or lies love or hate towards myself and other people in the moment of now I am not thinking spiritual I am living spiritual moment to moment because what's going on inside is all the time our mood oh post our mood dictates a lot of the time how we think and how we behave and act so are we experiencing emotional and spiritual sanity today or are we experiencing emotional and spiritual insanity today we will not know until we are in the moment of now some things drive us crazy some things drive us to joy so we will not know until we are in the moment of now and then we can experience how emotional and spiritual works all day long not so easy when we have been compromised and shut down and have shut down our senses for so long our five senses hearing seeing touching and all the rest of it hearing and the sixth sense which is obviously intuition which sometimes is fantasy and sometimes accessing reality we don't know till we get there and live in the moment not so easy when we've compromised everything and then into sobriety, sobriety early days where everything is prickly too bright and sometimes just plain ugly when we look in the mirror because we have gone down so far and how do we bounce up again well we don't bounce well we do a bit and then we start to get our senses back and we go too fast and then we have to slow down and then we slow down and it's not fast enough that's how life is but if we can be keeping in the moment more and more knowing our mood knowing our thinking and actions we're more into experiencing the spiritual life rather than thinking about it common ground in fellowship many this is important common ground in fellowship many people believe in God many people are atheist and many people are, are, are agnostic and many people are confused the common ground is sobriety and then everyone has their own personal beliefs opinions and outlooks affiliations controversial notions and whatever it may be they are all things which contribute to each of us being human being a human being and people will express all their notions and ideas and opinions when they are sharing experience strength and hope of sobriety and why not because you might find that their ideas and beliefs are the ideas and beliefs that you wish to adopt or you already have so you may go back to being where you were before without having to drink anymore or you may have a completely new life like me because the old life driving myself mad trying to be perfect and driving everybody else mad around me just led me back to old behavior so new behavior truth love and wisdom in the moment of now and completely different to a life which was not good for me just because I was good at it doesn't mean it was good for me and I learned that the whole point of common ground is the experience shared about sober living and even when people hold opposite opinions and beliefs and they seem to be mad to us they are the fabric of their own sanity and not to be messed with by me so whatever your beliefs are please develop them if they keep you to the truth love and wisdom open honest and willing to live life on life's terms and not control people well there you are I put some conditions on it but it's about liberty liberty freedom 
and I must not mess with your views and opinions. I did that once in my 20s with a, a manager who had a whole different set of ideas about their life and I had a whole set of ideas about them becoming a director of a business and he didn't want it and it hurt, I hurt him and I hurt myself in the process because I was I was following the career path that I was careering along I thought everybody all, everybody thought the same way as me and of course people don't and it's not for me to impose my views opinions on others about their lifestyle and what they wanted to do with their lives they would have made a great director but they had a good idea in another direction and I judged it and he turned around and said how dare you judge me and he was right so I learned that lesson a long time ago but you know judgment will come back what is right for me and accepting and cherishing what is right for you when people share about what makes them tick and how they keep sober there is an energy beyond one human being there is the hope of the many in the room and in the meeting and many others simply benefit by being there and learning to listen again listening one day at a time in step one of the 12 step program which is the everyday step we admit and accept hopefully each day that we are alcoholics and we prefer and desire sobriety over the alternative which is falling back into the malady and insanity of drink and for all these years this is me sobriety being one day, day long has helped to keep me right sized about how to live in a world of real people real events and be a participant to be included what has happened I keep on learning about love I keep on learning about being included I keep on learning about control and powerlessness and I keep on learning about my needs and wants what I need to live a happy life and the wants which can make life very unhappy because I'm still prone to all the adverts all the hype about you ought to be doing this or eating this and if you're eating beef burgers which are 100% horse well what can I say we've been there is a policeman who used to be called knacker of the yard well somebody's knackered our beef it's now horse <laughs> uh, my friend runs a, a business where there are all sorts of question marks over the, the beef or the horse meat that goes into things and they're having a great time laughing about it because they do get their supplies from various sources anyway as far as we know there's beef 100% even though it might be 100% horsey it's just funny it won't kill people but you know the whole thing of it's malicious at the very least to pretend you're selling beef when in fact it's horse anyway and I keep on learning about my needs and wants I need to be I find the comedy in life I really do I don't want a lot of things but it, the wants sometimes really get on my nerves what I need to be happy in life to live a, a happy a, what I need to live a happy life and the wants can, which can make life very unhappy if my needs are met the wants are forgotten most of the time and just for today it's all good I don't want to eat horse probably have in my life lots of times life is perverse you know. common ground in fellowship though sharing and share, uh, sharing and sharing the experience strength and hope of sobriety some people utilize knowledge as power and keep their knowledge secret I can recall in many many business scenarios that knowledge was kept secret and the power of the, over that knowledge resided in a few people <coughs> and latterly that was in the banks and I found them to be detestable secrets and they they didn't like me 
I was teaching business ethics a lot of the time about how to be truthful, how to have integrity, how to have uh, an outlook of fair dealing and be honest in financial services perish the thought anyway it broke me I had a nervous breakdown doing it and it was a big breakdown I prefer little nervous breakdowns each day in the moment of now if then if they are happening experience them and then it don't get to be a, it doesn't get to be a big midlife or a big crisis with a mountain of problems collapsing in on, in on us again. So I can recall in many business scenarios that knowledge was kept secret and the power over that knowledge resided in a few people. I detested some of these knowledge power bases because they disempowered the rest of the people. And outside fellowship we will encounter many people who are secretive and feel knowledgeable and superior to those people around them almost as if they have a superior angle on life. In a small way they do have power over that knowledge and if we get drawn into other people's secrets they will keep us sick and them sick. That doesn't mean you have to spill your guts on everything. Some things you go to for professional help and that's important. Yeah. The power of common ground and knowledge is, the, is to the common good in fellowship and we learn how to be human, hopefully prefer the truth, love and wisdom in the moment of now and we carry these principles into our daily living in our own personal way as we experience the emotional spiritual life we may never have encountered until now. So we see it in a different way and our honesty about our situation helps other people be honest with us. The less secretive we are, you know, all this huddling in corners and private knowledge of something may make you feel superior. That's your ego. If, you're, if you really want to, to connect with the world, stick with truth, love and wisdom and get comfortable about it. I know that secrets will keep me sick, sick and tired and suspicious of those who keep them and me if I keep secrets. There is too much energy in hiding the truth, love and wisdom of now. It's negative energy because you're having to close down rather than open up. Applying myself and experiencing life as it is rather than a half life or no life at all is my preference. And that is my preference, to be open, honest and willing today. And this is only applicable to me today. I don't expect it or feel entitled for others to adopt my preferences of being open, honest and willing. But if I can't connect with them in an open, honest and willing way and they're holding back, I will know it. Because I've learned that there was nothing wrong with my intuition in the olden days. It was the rest of me which tended to go off in the wrong direction. In fellowship we are included if we choose to be, to whatever level feels comfortable and maybe a little bit of discomfort as we learn how to be included. In fellowship we are included if we choose to be, to whatever level feels comfortable and in fellowship we learn how to love and express love to whatever level feels comfortable and the amount of control we need is whatever level feels uncomfortable letting go and not controlling letting go and including letting go and learning how to love is all part of the journey for me one day at a time so let go and not control, let go and include, let go and learn how to love. Love changes every day and it's important for me to remember that because if I become complacent and forgetful of what makes life work 
a drink is only an arm length away and if I don't stick with the principles, the 12 steps talk about them, live them, experience them in real life they won't make any sense so the whole notion of 12 steps and 12 principles is about liberty, freedom of choice based on reality as it is today that's how it works it's not a mystery it just takes practice it's not theory it's practice and many people have written about this over the centuries you can know intellectually what might be right but until you do it and experience it it's just a theory so living in the moment experiencing truth love and wisdom is is there in us to express and to receive once we learn how because it's very difficult to understand how anybody could love us and yet some people do the fellowship's all about love that's the foundation of everything whether you believe in God or whatever your beliefs are it's important for you to understand your outlook and what works for you there is no consensus of how you should conduct yourself in life that is your personal freedom and choice but in fellowship we have this common ground of sharing how to be sober and we share everything ad infinitum all the time everybody's sharing or not they may just be listening because they're new or they may be shouting because they're angry or throwing chairs about some of the time but we don't like that too much and it doesn't happen too much these days I don't know why that is maybe because the chair throwers are dead there'll be some more along shortly because that's the nature of addiction and the malady people don't know they're in it till they're in it and there is a way out into reality which can be fun you know, why get sober if it's not fun why get sober if you can't be yourself you don't have to be like other people see I'm a rebel with the cause these days rebellious saying be yourself at all costs that's what counts for me I don't want you to be like me I don't want you to be like the person sitting next to you in a meeting I want you to be you I need you to be you and then I can relate so the serenity prayer which helps me every single day the can do cannot do and wisdom happening all, all the time I can do this because I know how I cannot do that because I don't know I don't feel like it or simply I need to ask for help to work out can do can't do and there's lots of things I can't do there's, I cover my needs some of my wants they won't happen and that's life that's life it's just how it is so needs met open honest and willing life works the serenity prayer to God or in good conscience or whatever your beliefs and opinions are all to the good God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference it is the wisdom to know the difference just for today